Hi everyone, welcome to management class. This is Dr. Bowen with a quick review of chapter five in Bowen Rollins Martin, The Organizational Factors of Management. This is an extremely important chapter, so let me just hit a few definitions for you. Organizational culture is one of the most important things we study. It's comprised of all of the factors that make up an organization. So it's everything rolled into one, its mission, its visions, its founding, its location, its beliefs, what it does, its competitive advantage, what it's like to work in the organization, what its leadership style is like, how large or small it is, etc. So overall, organizational culture is like the personality of an organization. It's everything rolled into one. It's distinct to that organization, but it's also something that you can sort of feel when you work there. You can get to learn when you're inside of it or doing business there. You'll be able to differentiate cultures of different organizations. The next is organizational character. That is the values, the ethical beliefs, and the mission of the organization. To what extent are those values enacted in leadership and in the daily management activities of an organization? Are they used, for example, in making decisions? Are they used in strategic management on a routine basis? Ethical values give us the character of an organization so that we know what it stands for, what it values, and what it's genuinely like in terms of ethics. And then organizational climate. Organizational climate is a smaller concept than organizational culture. It's almost like a microclimate where weather can change. So organizational climate can change with groups or teams or smaller departments or even um, smaller work groups of an organization. When we talk about organizational climate, oftentimes we use temperature types of uh, designators such as it's open and warm and inviting or it's closed and cold, cold or cooler, maybe a little more detached. And it does depend on the particular manager who's leading each area and the group team members and what they're like, but there can be many organizational climates within a larger organizational culture. And then Finally, organizational structure, of course, that's defined thoroughly in your book. You have some illustrations there for you that talk about vertical communication or vertical structure and how that impacts communication or horizontal structure and how communication is more decentralized. We talk about centralization of information and authority versus decentralized approaches as well. So. Vertical organizational structure oftentimes is thought to be more authoritarian and more formalized in its communication approaches, and a decentralized or horizontal flattened organizational structure is thought to be a little bit more informal, a little more participatory in general. But at any rate, the structure of an organization does impact the way that communication flows, whether it's up and down, whether it's sideways from peer cohort groups and so on, or a mix of both of those approaches. And then lastly in the chapter, I discussed reporting relationships, which I think are great for you to think about because we all are aware of the supervisor and supervisee reporting relationship. Um, that's called a direct reporting relationship, but what about dotted line reporting? Dotted line reporting is reporting to someone on an as-needed basis or situationally or less often than a direct report. Um, that's a very important concept when we're dealing with issues management as well because issues management teams are oftentimes composed of many dotted line reporting relationships and those relationships tend to dissolve depending on the issue. When a potential problem is resolved, that reporting relationship may take less precedence and become sporadic or informal. At any rate, that is Chapter 5, The Organizational Factors of Management. I can't impress upon you enough how important it is to learn this terminology so that when you are a manager, you're conversant with these terms, but you also understand 
the role that all of these factors play in your communication and in good communication of an organization. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.